G'day folks, um, welcome to this little uh, LT session where we're going to have a little look at uh, creating an online course survey. Um, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a unit survey for my senior English class and I'm going to talk through with you how to do this using Google Docs and also some of the issues that you're going to need to be thinking about as you do this. So basically um, the tools that I've got at my disposal at this point, I've got Google Docs sitting open and I also have in this pages document my little um, ethics and purpose statement which I've set up and I'll talk to you about why you need to do this and um, I'm also going to give you a template in how you can get started doing that. The other tool that I've got open in my Adobe Reader is a uh, a course evaluation survey which um, comes from Curtin University. It's a very famous one and it's basically called the, the CEQ questionnaire okay which is um, uh, part of what they do every year which is the Australian Graduate Survey um, and um, it's the, called the Course Experience Questionnaire and I'm actually going to use it because it's a very very well known one um, very highly respected and it's very easy to take and adapt and um, use as part of your own course evaluation so let's get started and um, basically I'm going to start off in Google Docs okay and I'm going to create a new form Okay, so with the form, I just click on Create New over here, and basically I'm going to choose Form. And then you get essentially a blank blank form. Okay, now I'm just going to call this um, uh, Growing Up Unit Evaluation for Year 11 Advanced. English. I'll put my name in there. Okay, and this is the title. So kids are going to get get the um, the email that's asking them to fill in the survey, and this is the title. And then here it says you can include any text or info that will help people fill this out. And at this point, I'm actually going to go to my pages document where I prepared this little um, course evaluation uh, sort of. Um, summary statement at the start here it talks about the purpose of the survey and I'm just going to bring your attention to a couple of things that I've put in this okay basically in this first paragraph here I am explaining what this email is all about the fact that it is a course evaluation survey um, the reason that I'm sending it to the kids um, what I hope to sort of get out of it um, you know the importance of doing this sort of thing okay and then in the second paragraph, I'm basically going on to talk about um, how the survey works. And I'm explaining that it's online, um, and that the kids will fill it in, and the responses will be um, going into a spreadsheet uh, through Google Docs. I'm also indicating to the kids that I can actually have a look at all the responses, and I will you know, be working out things like... Um, you know, do the kids respond favorably to this question, or is there something that I need to be worried about? Um, and I also will be reading, you know, answers to longer questions if and when I use them. Um, I've also said here, I may in future lessons show the spreadsheet and any other charts I've generated from it to the class for further discussion. So I'm just being very upfront about that, and I think that's really, really important. Um, this this paragraph here is basically all about this idea of um, anonymity and why it's important. And I've just basically said that I'm setting this survey up to be anonymous, and I'll show you how to do that. And I've basically told the kids that I'm not asking Google Docs to record the username, um, so I have no way of knowing exactly who said what. Furthermore, I have no intention of connecting names with responses. You should feel free to be as honest as you like and it's very important you know that if you answer honestly I will not think badly of you or the class as a whole now in the future. Okay and then of course I've just said um, the very end um, uh, um, basically that um, it's it's a really important thing that what they're doing. So at this point I'm gonna just take all of that and I'm going to paste it in here and if you like what I've got you can just tweak it if you like, if you're happy with it. But that's um, my little um, 
blurb before the um, the questions. Okay. Now, um, once I've got that, I can um, start with my actual questions, and I'm going to show you the easiest way of doing it. So, looking at the CEQ, you can actually see here that uh, it's it's a very very simple um, survey in in the sense that all that we've got are a series of statements, and they're just here. And um, basically, they um, state something, and kids either strongly disagree, they disagree, neither agree nor disagree, agree and strongly agree. Okay, and I guess from a um, concept point of view, this is easy for the kids because they're working with the same criteria for every single question. So it's um, not as not as difficult as trying to switch between different question types, which can be quite tricky. <coughs> and can um, get the kids a, a bit off track at times. So I'm actually going to use uh, these questions. I'm, I'll adapt them slightly as I go, but I am going to keep that criteria. And the way to do this in Google Docs when you're setting up your form um, is to give the, the question, um, question a title. In this case, I'm actually going to call it's one question, but it's going to contain multiple questions because it's, um, it's a grid. So um, I'll just call this course evaluation statements, okay? And then I'm going to um, put a little help thing in here. I'll say um, select the the bubble which best matches your agreement or disagreement to the statements shown. So it's pretty simple instruction. What I've got to do here with the question type is basically choose this grid option here. And I've got to now put in the grid columns and this is it's dead easy. Okay, so if I go back to the the CEQ, you can see here that this first column is strongly a, a disagree. Okay? The second column is going to be disagree. Third column is neither agree nor disagree. Fourth column is agree, and the fifth column is strongly agree. So I'm just going to put them in, see if I can remember these. So we've got strongly disagree. Okay, and then we've just got disagree, neither disagree nor agree. And then agree, and then strongly agree. Okay, so it's looking good so far. So we've got our columns and basically now we just need to click in our rows and this is quite easy when um, when you're working with you know fairly straightforward statements as I do in the CEQ and I'm going to show you how to do, I'll just do five of these and you can follow me as you go. Okay, so if we go back to the CEQ um, I might say that the, if I like this one, the teacher put a lot of time into commenting on my work. Okay, so I'll just take that. And I hope that they strongly agree to that because I do spend a lot of time on their work. Uh, row two will be the teaching staff normally give me helpful feedback on how I was going. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pr phrase this in the present tense. Um, in fact, I'm going to change the first one into present tense as well. So I'll just check that again. The teaching, st oh, the teacher uh, normally gives me. helpful feedback on how I am going. Great. Just look and see what I want to do. The course helps me, or the unit I'll say, the unit helps me develop my ability to work as a team member. This unit has, oh, present perfect there, has helped me to develop my ability to work as a team member. Develop my ability to work as a team member. Done. Okay, uh, row four, doing a couple more, are we up to? It's always easy to know the standard of work expected. It's always easy to know. 
and you get the idea. Um, this is just fantastic because I've just got straightforward columns and all I'm doing is putting in a series of statements. If I wanted to add in one of my own, of course I can do that. I've got the flexibility to change these as I need to. Uh, so let's do row 5 and we're up to uh, my teacher, or say the teacher of this course has motivated me to do my best work. I'll go present tense. The teacher of this unit uh, motivates me to do my best work. Okay, and they're, they're all um, really good statements. Um, now, I guess I wanted to um, point out a couple of other things with regards to survey design, and um, and this is this is all really good so far. Um, I, I, ethically, I'm covering my bases here because with this statement up the top, I am being very clear with the kids on what I intend to do with this survey data, um, and I'm also specifying that it's anonymous. Okay, so. Just with regards to anonymous, I just want to bring your attention to a couple of boxes right up here. Okay, um, the first one I'm going to leave blank. It says allow users to edit responses, and it just means that um, once they've submitted them, they've submitted them, and I, I want to just do it as a clean um, go so that they don't get to go back and edit them. I'm just going to leave that uh, uh, blank. But if you want to experiment with that one, you can. Require Carolyn Chisholm College to sign in, uh, sign in to view this form. So kids will um, already be signed into their email. So I'm just going to tick that just to make sure that I don't get outsiders, you know, randomly finding it and um, completing my survey. I don't only want it to be um, kids that I've emailed. This third box here automatically collect the responders' uh, Carolyn Chisholm College username. I am going to leave blank. The reason I'm leaving this blank is because I've promised the kids, in this case, that I'm not going to be collecting their email address as part of this. Um, if you did want to know who said what, um, you know, it was important to you to be able to you know, identify that a negative response was from a particular kid, for example, um, you can tick this box, okay? My advice is be very upfront with the kids. If you tick this box and you are going to collect their email address as part of this survey, do let them know in, in the statement because um, it's, it's ethically the right thing to do, particularly when you're doing any kind of research or any kind of questionnaire, you'd have to do that. So um, just be very upfront. I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to zoom out. Um, and the only other thing that I really wanted to bring your attention to with regards to my statements here, um, I've done five of them, and it, the problem, I guess, with them is at this point, um, they're all very positive statements, and what can happen when kids are doing a survey like this one is that they'll basically start just clicking agree, 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 and, and they get into a bit of a pattern, and uh, they sort of go onto autopilot, and as such, their responses might not be sort of 100%, um, you know, honest or, or straightforward. So basically, um, in this case, what I really want to do is throw in what we call some distractor questions. Okay, um, and if I go to number six, for instance, on the CEQ, which says the course provided me with a broad overview of my field of knowledge, um, and I might turn that into a negative and I say something like, I really don't have a good handle on the broader issues surrounding those studied in this unit. Okay, so you can see at that point um, I've, I've put in a negative statement. Essentially there I'm really looking for kids to disagree. So um, that's that's um, that's a really important thing. I've just taken that statement and I am turning it into a negative. And what I do recommend is that every Every three or four statements, um, five at the most, you do throw in a negative one, and and you can you can sort of scatter them throughout, because you're checking in that regard to see that the kids are reading the, the statements carefully, and obviously sometimes they will want to disagree, and you, you're actually putting them on on guard to really think about the statements by doing that. Okay. Um, if I want, I can make this a required question, but I I I'm going to leave it. Um, leave that unticked and then when I'm, I've done my statements I'm just going to tick done okay and you'll you'll see at this point what it looks like um, 
So this is a grid style and I've got my statements over here and there they are and then I go to these little bubbles that um, I've told the kids that they can they can choose there and uh, off you go. So this point you are really good to go um, I'm going to just delete that stand. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make this sample question too. I'm going to hit the little edit button, and I'm just going to write um, uh, please provide any comments for your teacher, and I'll just say optional. And just dead simple, um, and I'll just say type in the box below good for help and this is going to be paragraph text okay so paragraph text gets gets a nice little box that you can you know type a, a full paragraph in if you are um, that way inclined and I hit done and so you can see at this point I've got my grid statements here I've got my paragraph box here and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that okay of course I'm going to add my other um, my other statements in and you can have as few or as many as you like but um, it's very simple um, I've got my survey statement here so I'm just going to email this form and uh, I'm just going to email it to myself just for good measure just to show you uh, how this works now I'll just point out if you are smart like me well in this case you can have your contacts set up and um, it's easy to just select from your contacts so if I've got my contacts here and I've got my um, year 11 class here I can just select all and then I can um, hit done and, and, and it will go off to all of them I'm not going to do that at this point because I haven't finished it so I just want to send myself a test and I'll say include the form in the email and hit send okay and at this point I am going to have the form in my email so I'm just going to flick over to my mail and show you what it looks like when it does arrive in the email. Hopefully it's arrived already. Usually it's pretty quick. Okay, here we go. So it's called Growing Up Unit Evaluation and this is what the kids will see in their inbox. So you click on that and basically we get the survey itself. So we get the title of it. We have the, um, the, the statements here. Okay. Um, I might have to go back and check that I've paragraphed that properly and put extra lines in because it's um, put all those lines together. That's okay. I'll, I'll go back and change that. And then it's got the statements. And remember, I just um, I indicate, you know, if I'm a kid here, teacher puts a lot of time into commenting on my work, and, and yes, he does. Um, normally gives me helpful feedback. Oh, yeah, he most of the time he does. Uh, this has um, helped me to develop my work as a team member. We, yes, I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, it's always easy expected standard of work. Yep, definitely. Teacher's very motivating. Okay. Hmm, I really don't have a good handle on the broader issues. I disagree with that. I think I do. Okay. And then, um, of course, I can type in the optional comments here. Okay. And then, from the student's point of view, all they do at this point is hit the submit button. So it's going off to them, so they, uh, sorry, it's, it's going from them to me, so hit submit, and it will say you are submitting information to an external page, are you sure? Yes. Okay, and it's been recorded. So I'll show you what happens then on your side as the teacher when you've got uh, your, um, your uh, survey and you want to check the data that's gone in. So I'm just going to go back to home. Here it is, and it, it, you'll see here it's got a little um, what's got like a, like a little form icon, that green one, and that indicates it's a spreadsheet and a form, and it says "Growing Up Unit Evaluation for Year 11 Advanced English." And basically, I click into that, and then what I've got here is a spreadsheet which has been automatically generated by Google, corresponding to the form that I've created. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what that means effectively. Okay, so I've got here uh, that sample question one at the start that I didn't delete. Um, I'll leave that now. And I've got the optional comments. And then I've got uh, here course evaluation statements. And then there they are. And there's the responses that have been given. Now, you'll note here it just says timestamp that at that time there was a response that went through and that was the time that I just answered the email so 
I want to point out here that there, there is no username, so I don't know. I mean, that in this case, that was me, right? I was filling in my own form. But um, other than that, I, I if I didn't know that, I, I wouldn't know who had responded at this point. Okay, so it is anonymous. I've told the kids it would be. Um, showing you just a, a quick thing here with the form, you'll, you'll see that you can, again, view the live form. If you say go, go to live form, it'll just show you the form. And there it is. Okay. Um, I'll just close that tab and I'm back at the spreadsheet and the next um, tool that I'm going to make use of is um, this one here called show summary of responses and this is going to be really really helpful when I've had say 20 or so responses and I, I want to see a nice summary of them I hit show summary and it will say that, that how many responses there have been and then it actually walks you through the different uh, statements here so a teacher puts a lot of time and I can see that a hundred percent of the responses has said strongly agree um, and I'm getting hundred percent here because there's been only one response but you can see here that um, it's it's tracking the response and all responses and showing you where they they sort of sit there okay and you go through all of them and then um, there's optional comments and I, I just typed in optional comment and it'll give you a nice list of them okay um, it will give you a little, little chart to indicate how um, many responses you've had on which days so at this point this is as much as I really need okay naturally it's going to be more useful um, once it's a complete survey so I, I do want to go back to the form and just tweak that a little bit um, which I'll show you how to do in a minute and I also do want to encourage all students to respond because um, once I've finalized the form and I have emailed it out um, naturally the more information I get from the kids the more useful it's going to be to me and you know it'd be interesting to know I'm just fascinated to know for instance with this one here just what my, my kids think about how much uh, time I'm putting into commenting on their work because I know that that's something I do a lot but um, hopefully they're, they're acknowledging that and appreciating that so that's great um, and of course the other comments too that I've got here uh, I'm keen to know what my kids feedback uh, is on that on those con comments so basically uh, now if I want to go back to edit the form I just go tap on form and then edit form and I get, get back into it here and um, there's the questions uh, and I can at this point just hit edit and I can go back in uh, and start adding more rows okay so um, what I suggest to you is that basically you want to finalize the form before you, you email it out okay um, what you don't want to do is email out a form and then suddenly go back in and change it because that's when you'll start getting um, funny columns appearing in the spreadsheet and it won't make a whole lot of sense to you um, if you, your columns are all over the place so I, I suggest just get it all finalized and um, you know go from there um, what I'm going to do, folks, is basically this this um, sp uh, this spreadsheet and form. Once I've got it finalised, I'm actually going to save that as a as a template to the templates gallery, so you can have a little look at it. Um, of course, if you want to construct your own, I do recommend doing it from scratch because uh, you can you know have that real sense of ownership, and you can you know from the ground up you can have have that input into how you think it should go. But you know, be aware of ethics, be aware of of um, being very upfront with the kids and telling them what you're going to do with the information, and telling them how much you appreciate their their honest feedback because I think that that's the key to some really good teaching. Um, so yeah, this has been. Um, Google Forms and uh, online course evaluation surveys with Michael. Hope you've enjoyed it and um, good luck with your survey.